day I have been out on the in the trees around the garden and I've managed to get all of these apples there's loads of them they're really heavy and I was thinking what could I do with them the problem is really there's only me and my husband now at home but you know I love apples it's my favorite fruit I think I'm gonna have three of them to do some lovely apple crumble and I'm gonna do three of them to make an apple pie and finally I'm gonna use three of them to do apple sauce because I like apple sauce and it leaves all of these apples I don't know what to do with them but never mind hello yes Oh, hello. Yes, it's lovely to hear from you. Yeah, I'm a bit busy at the moment. I'm, I'm kind of working out what I'm going to do with some apples that I've chosen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you would like some apples. Really? Oh, it's a, it's a shame that I really haven't got very many left spare. Or else I'd pass some on to you. I'm really sorry, but I've got to go on with my baking. Speak soon. Bye. Well, that makes me feel a bit awkward. I know that I've got all of these apples, but I like apples. And if she'd have asked for something else, I probably would have given them to her, but apples. I love apples. You know, it's easy to give away something that we don't particularly want or like. But when we're asked to give away something that we do like, or we love, or is special to us, well, it's much harder, isn't it? In today's story, we hear of two people whose giving was very different. <laughs> So today's story is about a rich man and a poor woman, a widow, who gives her last penny. One day Jesus was in a village and he was always fascinated by the people he saw around him and how they were living, how they were ploughing the fields, how they were caring for one another. He always looked around him so that he could see and use what he was seeing to teach people important things. Well, one day he was looking at the door of a temple. Lots of people were coming and going. It was very busy. And eventually a very grand looking man appeared wearing very rich robes. And as he got to the door of the temple, he paused a little bit so that everyone could see that he was going into the temple. Well, as he came out of the temple, there was a bowl. And the bowl used to be somewhere that people could give money to help those less fortunate. And the very rich man beckoned his servant, who had a very large purse. He took the purse and he emptied it right into the giving bowl. Every last penny went into the bowl. But then the rich man looked down and said, mm, there's rather a lot of money there and you never know, I might need some. I think I'll take away all of the pound coins. That will mean they still have quite a lot of money left to help the poor. And then he thinks again, maybe I should take away all the 20 pence pieces as well. There's quite a lot of them and I'm sure that I can do something with those. 
And then he looked again and thought, well, I know I've taken the pound coins and the 20 pence pieces, but there are still some shiny coins in there. And really, the poor don't need the shiny coins. I think I'll take the shiny coins out. And so, eventually, the rich man's purse is full again. And the giving bowl, well, there were a few pennies left. As the rich man walked away, a poor widow began walking slowly towards the temple. It wasn't easy for her. She was in a lot of pain. But she managed to get to the temple doors. And when inside, she sat quietly at the back. She prayed to God and then remembered all the wonderful things that she had in her life. And so as she came out, she too saw the giving bowl. The problem was she hadn't got a nice big purse, just a little tatty plastic envelope. And in it were two 2p coins. Well, she was so grateful for everything that she'd received. For good friends and family, for food and a home. That she couldn't hold anything back from a God that had given her so much. And so the poor woman decided that she too would give money into the giving bowl. Did she just give one coin though and keep the other one back? That seems fair. Two coins, one for the poor, one for myself. But she knew that she had been given so much that just giving one of the coins wouldn't be good enough. And so, giving thanks, she placed her second and last coin into the giving bowl. Now Jesus watched this very carefully with his friends. And he said to them, which one do you think pleases God? Those who have a lot, but only give a little? Or those that have a little and give all that they have to be thankful to God and so that others might benefit? And of course the answer was that the widow giving her last two coins was the one that pleased God the most because she gave everything that she had. An important lesson, isn't it, today, as we think of harvest? We think how rich we are. We look in our food cupboards, in our kitchens, and we look on our plates, and we realise how blessed we are. And we're asking people during harvest and even after that to consider giving some of what they have to those who need it most. I know that you've been asked to make a collection of tins and dried fruit and food and I thank you for all that you have given. In the days ahead, May you count your blessings and remember how rich you are and hopefully that will make you more generous in the days to come. Happy Harvest. So today's craft 
has a food theme. I thought it would be lovely considering today is a ce- we're celebrating harvest. So I bought some of my favourite fruit and I thought I'd do a simple fruit salad. Something you could do at home with your family together. And it just takes a few things. It's nice if you've got things that are different colours. I happen to have this lovely Sunday dish, so in the bottom of it, I'm going to put some of these wonderful, lovely blueberries. Aren't they lovely colour? And then I'm going to put some orange in because I love satsumas. And these are great because you can peel them really easily. And so I'm going to put a few of these orange things so we can see the orange around the glass and then I'm going to add a next favourite thing, a banana. I love a banana. I like bananas with my breakfast. So I'm just going to cut some slices of banana and if you were doing this at home, maybe you could work, this is something you could do with someone else, helping you to cut up things safely. So I'm adding some banana on top of the orange. And of course, I've already said that my favorite fruit is an apple. I've left the peel on my apple because it's beautiful and pink and red. And so that will also add a lot of color. So I've cut that up and I'm gonna sprinkle that on the top. And it just leaves enough room for a few dark, grapes. I love grapes. So I'm just going to cut these in half and I'm going to place them on the top. Now of course at home you might just want to add something like fruit juice to it or even some ice cream but I like it just as it is to sit and eat as I'm watching the television at night. So I hope you enjoy a wonderful harvest celebration of all the fruits that you enjoy most in a wonderful fruit salad. Enjoy. So as always we end with prayer and we take our two hands and we kiss both of them in the centre. And then just for a moment, we think of all the wonderful blessings we have in our lives. Think of the food in your cupboard. Maybe you already know what you'll have for tea. Maybe you have the same thing for breakfast. Think of all the people who love you and who you love. How rich you are. Your life is like a harvest. And in this end, we need to remember people that aren't so fortunate. Life might be hard for them for a lot of reasons. And we need to remember that we are given so much, more than enough to share. So let's remember today in our prayers those who need us to share our harvest. So let us put our hands together and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have everything, more than they can possibly count or imagine. We pray that they may be generous kind, patient and giving. We pray for all the families that need help and support at this time. And we thank you for all the organisations that are trying their best to help them the most. So we pray that our harvest may go to help and support families who need it. And so with all of our love, we offer those up to God and ask him to help us as we give more than we can imagine. 
It's been lovely spending this harvest with you. I hope you enjoy making your fruit salad and eating it, of course. Maybe you could think of your favourite fruits to include. Until we see each other again. Bye.